Hello, scrappers. We've got another motor here. I figured I'd go ahead and break this one down and then uh, I'd go ahead and fire up the air chisel. Okay, I got it sitting right there. Yeah, I didn't do a lot of prep for this one. Hope everyone out there is doing good this morning. Of course, I don't know what time you're going to watch this, but... This probably really did, doesn't have to come off right here. Of course, I don't know, I've heard people selling these for, you know... I check with your scrapyard, see if uh, they have a category for them, because it may end up paying better than 10. Set that aside up there. Yeah, I thought I'd go ahead and break this one down, then fire up the air chisel and chisel it down. That way for some of the new subscribers, they can see how I do that. Get this electrical connector loose here to get the Pull the wire through here, here in a little bit. I got a cover right here. A lot of times these plates will be aluminum. Oh, that one sticks to a magnet. Tell by the long shafts on each end of this thing that uh, either was like a double grinder, grinder buffer, or probably come out of an air conditioner unit. One to run the cooling side, one to for the, the heat exchanger side. Brackets here usually just loosen them up and then they un unhook. If you're really trying to make time, you might be able to just cut them off with something. Yeah, let's see. Here's our wires. Not a lot of playroom in there. Just snip them off in there. projects sometimes I try to save these uh, try to save these a lot of times they come in handy if you're doing an electrical project but if not you know throw it in tin whatever the bracket should come on there we go now I was going to show you last week Just a straight screw head at this end, and I got a nut driver there. Sometimes those won't spin, so you know you can try it without the screwdriver. Sometimes they'll just buzz right off. I put my finger on it at least so I can feel it if it's spinning screw head. So that might 
fast work of that. Pull the rods out. slide really good, sometimes they don't want to. And if this shaft is really rusted up, pitted, real bad, a lot of times I just try to cut it as short as I can so I don't have to pull it out very far. Uh, let's see, yeah, that's aluminum. It sticks on this side, the center is aluminum so it's got a Space plate right here is tin, but the rest of that's aluminum. So if I can figure out how to get that off of there, looks like a couple of tabs. Which I can always probably pry that off later. Wish I get this off is okay. If not, I can do it later. Off the deal. I think that's something I'm going to play with later. Okay, we'll set that aside. Now, <coughs> it's got one of those, uh, I don't know how well you can see it there, little oil fill cap. Usually you can just get a hold of those with your pliers. Kind of twist back and forth a little bit as you pry upward. got a piece right in the center there that runs the oil into it. Let's see if I can't knock the center of that out. A little sheave. side work a little on the other. Another thing that kind of works really good sometimes, you can find a socket that'll fit in there about right. in there, but you can see it knocked it out pretty well. This is another alternative way to do it. Just find you a socket that fits in there good. 
I was afraid that was going to slide inside and wedge itself in. Then we just got to get that other piece off and it would be pretty much clean aluminum. I should pull that stuff out of there a little bit better. I don't want to spend too much time on this thing. Get on, move, on, move along here. Let me set this aside. I'll do that off camera. You get the idea, though. Uh, I already knocked the knocked the piece out of the center, so once you get that off of there, it's going to be clean, clean cast aluminum. The table likes to walk away from the wall. Now, in the last video, I had some holes in the casing so I was able to just cut it where the holes were. This one doesn't have the holes so holding this by hand while you're grinding. Harbor Freight makes a nice little clamp. It almost looks like a sawhorse, but it has a, a, a stop at one end and the clamp will come down. So you can put it up against that stop and bring your clamp in. And then on the end of it, it has like a foot pedal. Push that foot pedal down and it tightens up. I'm kind of looking at that and thinking, okay, is there, you know, a practical use for that that clamp in this kind of this kind of business? And uh, this would probably be one spot it would would be handy. Because a motor like this, you would be able to clamp it right in there and hold it still. Okay, and for those uh, that are fairly new to the channel, I'm going to run an air chisel, and uh, a lot of times that air chisel will go through this and then it'll chew up your workbench pretty good. So, what I did, I got a piece of a mud flap, and uh, that works really good. So, if you got a place close to you that works on semis or trucks. Uh, doesn't have to be a semi. A lot of one tons have mud flaps. <coughs> and I'll stop by and ask them if they have any old mud flaps that they normally throw away. Or ask if they don't have any, ask them if they'd hang on to you know, one or two for you. If they're not too bad of shape, you could even use them to throw on your, your floor for a little padding. <coughs> They'd work good for that. If you have a cement, cement floor, give you a little cushion under your feet. This piece has been loosening up on there quite a bit. That's just a little craftsman. Wasn't expensive at all. Sometimes I gotta try to move these things out of the way because they want to hang up on the wire sometimes. <coughs> try to get it right along the edge of the metal. Now you can also do this with a hacksaw if you don't have an air chisel. You could use it with the sawzall angle grinder. That was one thing I didn't mention and I really didn't even look at on here. But I probably should have done I probably should have chiseled this side here because it has the, the strings where it holds all the copper together. Doing it, doing it without the strings, a lot of times it'll bust loose like this. And you just gotta gotta kinda contend with that as you go. Or I think some of these are tied together, so.
tapes and some of the copper sticking to the tape. I don't know if I can zoom in on that. We can get a better look at what I'm doing. See the nice orange copper color there. Sometimes you get these that are hanging out, so they're laying over. They're laying, well, let me back out here a little here. But if these things are laying flat like that and you try to pry them out, it makes it tougher, so a lot of times what I do is just snip them off. Sometimes you get nice clean cuts all the way. I probably need to take my chisel bit over to the angle grinder and sharpen it up a hair. That never hurts. Well, if you're learning anything from my videos, that's good. Uh, look, go ahead and leave a comment. You got a better way of doing it? I know there's some people that, that don't have the time to do it. They said they'd actually lose money, but and they probably would stay hooked up. Some of these guys do some serious scrapping. But they say I'm more of a, a hobby scrapper. Wish I'd do it for the extra money too, but uh, I'm not full time and some of these guys are full time and they would lose money breaking these down like this. And I talked to a few of the heat and air companies around here and they take their comp you know compressors and stuff like that in without breaking them down. Now if a guy could get a hold of some of those guys and pay them what the scrapyard's paying or maybe a, a penny more per pound. Probably wouldn't have to go around picking up junk. You could probably just you know, make a little money on the side, just cutting theirs down. Yeah, a lot of times I'll just kind of blow that stuff out of the way. But now, now we're into these strings. For years, I just used a regular box, and I have to cut these strings. But you're you're running that sharp edge right up against the copper, which. Uh, Copper is kind of a soft metal, but it'll still dull your blade. So, what I started doing, I started using these hook blades. I guess right here, glove makes a better background. Started using these hook blades, and there I just try to hook the string right up under the blade. I 
like any box knife, you got to be careful because these things will get you if you're not careful. And just go around here and cut these loose. I had one of my viewers comment on my little miniature pry bar. I got this in a set. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Uh, here in Oklahoma City, there's a Steve's Wholesale Tools. That might have been where I got it because I used to do a lot of trading with them. But they don't have one around my area anymore, so. Which the nearest Walmart to me is like 18 miles away. So. I usually get most of my stuff at Harbor Freight or Home Depot. Uh, there's two different routes I can take to work or home. And the mileage is the same. One is down the freeway, so faster speeds, so that's less time. The other way is back highways. And if I go the back highway route, I go right past a, a Lowe's, so sometimes I'll build that Lowe's on the way home from work. You know, it just takes me a little longer, but it's you know really no gas, extra gas. And sometimes what I'll do on prying these out, I'll, after I use this and get it broke loose a little bit, then I'll go to a, just a common flathead, you know and pry them up and get them up a little further. I've had some that were really, really tough, so once I got out so far, I just take the hammer and strike it right here. Now you can barely see that. Let me see if I can raise the can pan upward a little bit. And of course it doesn't. The stand wants to be really jerky. Sorry for the ride. I hope you didn't get, didn't get seasick there. but. Uh, Sometimes you know, I'll just take this and just hit it like that and work, work it around and the whole thing will come out in one big unit. But normally I use the channel locks. I get on it and I use the rounded back edge of it. Take advantage of that rounded back edge for prying. And I try to keep the strings out. get these that are kind of coated sometimes I can just straighten them out and pull the insulation right off. This one here is coming apart easy. We'll get a weight on this here in a minute. And I got a lot of these wires. I got a five gallon bucket over there that is for all this little bitty stuff like this. It's you know be kind of tedious trying to trying to strip that, so I just I got a little bucket to throw all that in, and that'll just be sold as you know, sold as is. If you're liking my videos, please subscribe, like, give it a thumbs up. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments. You know, share the video with your friends or any other scrappers you know.
There's lots of different ways to scrap. Yeah, like I said, there's more, more than one way to pluck a chicken. So, the way I do stuff is comfortable for me. I've seen other people do it other ways. And sometimes I think, yeah, they got a better way of doing it than I do. But, uh, yeah, this works for me. Okay, set this aside. Get all the copper out of that, no stragglers. Bring that little scale in here and get it set up. We'll see if we can't get a get a weight here. We'll set an empty bucket or set an empty bucket on it. Okay, she's so zeroed out now. It's saying minus three point. 3.3 .3 ounces. So, I don't know if you can, you probably can't see that from over there. Yeah, let me put this back on here. Okay, that's saying zero. That's saying two pounds, 14.2 ounces. Almost six dollars just out of that one motor. So I guess I'll put that on there and I'll bring the camera over. And I want to thank everybody for watching. We'll get a view of that here in just a second. Unplug the monitor. Flip the viewfinder over so I can see what you're looking at. There we go. Let me get out of the glare. Two pounds, 14.2 ounces. Well, thank everybody for watching. And uh, I'll try to get another video out probably Tuesday or Wednesday. And uh, I still got a little bit of stuff. So you can see, which I got that motor there. That's out of a dryer, so it'll be aluminum windings. But I got a few good, mo still a few good motors in there. And I got some little miscellaneous box fan. There to get to tear down a couple little bitty portable TVs, a few microwaves. I got two microwaves and a bigger TV out in the other room. Yeah, that uh, video of uh, that refrigerator, hospital bed, uh, antenna that I brought in here a week or so ago. I had this in the back seat. I forgot to mention that. Uh, this box here was in the back seat too. It's got a few little copper bearing motors, which, you know, I can get a little copper out of that one, probably buy that one. These two will be pretty decent. I think everything will probably work out okay right there. So that'll be a few, a few bucks in that too. So it's definitely worth going after. Oh, and that refrigerator, they told me it didn't work. It worked. My wife likes it. So now it's in my kitchen. So, or in her kitchen. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you later in the week. Have a good weekend, everybody, and uh, keep living the life. Yeah, Bye-bye.